This is a real life adventure. Three boys, three girls, four countries. Working in the rice fields of China, car factory in Mexico, fishing off Vancouver Island, and husky mushing in Alaska. This is Trace. Kahindi and Gerald are taking a trip to the fish farm, whilst the others have already started work back at the fish plant. We've just seen a killer whale come up over there. It's gone back down now, I think we might have scared it. But there is a whale over there. I can't see it. But there's two! There's two! Oh my god! Whaling trip trek style. The others are going to be so jealous when we tell them. Oh yeah. Oh, Tom's going to be like, oh. Oh yeah. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. That's a baby one. Baby okay. Why are killer whales called killer whales? Well, because it's killing a whale. Really? It kills really? whales? Yeah, well, they're going to... They're gonna pack together and then they're gonna go and uh, attack whale. Really? Yeah, they, 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 kind of, they call them two uh, uh, wolf pack, the wolf of the ocean. So they, they pack together and they go uh, for the whale. They kill really? sharks too? Uh, better than sharks. There's another one there. I'm in the ice room for this morning anyway, shoveling ice which go down into the big tubs and the fish then get chucked into, cleaned and then packed. This is my ice room jumper and I'm going to enter. Follow. <laughs> the ice here is for packing the fish, so it's important to keep it coming through. Tom will have his work cut out here. With 20 tonnes of ice shoveled each day, it's a never-ending job, this one. Still, it's all good experience for Alaska. Usually these fans are going, but they shut them off because it gets so cold in here, you get frostbitten. Right. Yeah. I think this morning when I was in here, for about half an hour anyway, it was minus 22, so. Then my nostrils were frozen. I, I couldn't breathe through my nose anymore. Does that go directly into the tanks? No, there's a tote down there. Yeah. You know those totes we uh, have uh, in front, all that you see in front of the plant there all the time, blue yeah. light, blue yeah, light? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's... Oh, there's one that we're filling yeah, now. Yeah, you see it? Oh, right. Okay. So there's a forklift parked down there, and the forklift will take it away, and then it'll actually lift it up, and then it'll shove another one underneath, and when that one's full, they'll take it away. I see. All right. You haven't fallen down the hole yet? No, not yet. Give me time. <laughs> I've only been here an hour. <laughs> Break time! <laughs> right on. That's the signal. Bang, 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 bang means stop. <laughs> yeah. Stop and go for cold action. Right, we're going off to a fish farm. So feed some fish. fish. We've got to put these life jackets on so we don't drown. 
We're not going to drown. But then again, those boats don't look very safe. They can't do that. Oh. This building is moving. This whole thing moves. Did you feel it when you were inside the house? I think we look quite good. Isn't the man going to come on with us? Where is he? Don't rock the boat. Rock the road. Are we going to get to drive the boat? Yeah, can we give it? Can I give it a quick rav? Okay. I'm Jared, by the way. Hi, I'm yeah. Jared. I'm Kehinde, if you can pronounce that. No one can. I know it. It takes this approximately three years to grow a fish from an egg to its full size and ready for the process in the Englewood. Jumping fish, why are they jumping? <laughs> Interesting question, we've never been able to answer that one. We sent out this questionnaire to uh, a whole bunch of people and, and uh, it was one of the questions we missed. Why do, why do fish jump? No one knows for sure. Everyone's got their own little theory. I've never seen jumping fish before, it's really The fish just like getting pregnant, having little fishes and then taking the fish over to Englewood and then yeah. cleaning them and packaging them and then they go off to wherever they go. Yeah, normally they go into the United States and over to Japan. It's most of where the, most of the fish go. They're the biggest But how do they keep fish. them like, fresh? If they're going when, all the way to they, Japan. When they leave Inglewood, they're in Seattle and within 24 hours and distributed. And if they're going, if they're going overseas, within I think it's just over 24 hours, they're at the market in uh, Japan. But how did the By fish plane. get to Japan so quickly? By plane. By plane. By plane. Yeah, we'll we'll truck them all to Seattle, send them to SeaTac Airport, and they're on a, a jet. As soon as they arrive, and they're gone. It doesn't take them very long at all. You sure they don't swim? No. Nice. We haven't trained them that far yet. They just swim where we wanted to go. And they're fed twice a day. First thing in the morning and as late at night as possible before dark. And then half an hour before dark we turn on all those lights. So they look like it's daylight 24 hours a day here. Why do you feed them as late as night as possible? Try and separate the two feeds as far as possible so they'll eat more, so they digest it better. So you're not cramming them full of feed. There's basically a couple companies in the world that make it the premier stuff. We buy the best. Food we can possibly best. get, get our hands on. It smells just like my goldfish food. Yeah. Since they have their own farm, they're not restricted in the amount they can process. Unlike back in the UK, where tough restriction quotas are in place to protect the dwelling supplies of cod from the sea. 3,000 people are employed directly and indirectly in British Columbia's salmon farming industry. At a time when many coastal communities are losing traditional jobs in forestry, mining and commercial fishing, salmon farming has helped create stable economies for coastal British Columbia. When the fish comes through, just take this. Any scales that are left, we have to manually take them off. Just be doing this. Then the fish are put up here and their heads and tails are taken off. Um, any debris put in here, like the heads and tails and so on. And uh, it's reused later on. So this is the fish once the head and the tail's been cut off. All right. You're taking it over here, placing it in this, in this machine. And this machine basically just cuts it in half and takes some of the insides out. And so this is uh, where the main part of the fish comes out, most of the meat. Here they cut off any fat and ribs and so on. Pass down the belt. Passed uh, through this machine, which takes most of the bones out. But any bones that aren't taken out are manually taken out over here. We we'll just check to see if any bones haven't come out. And here, a couple of bones haven't. This 
throw bonds into the belt. And then down here, the fish is graded uh, for size and quality. Um, and then through our machine down here, it takes the skin off the fish so that you've just got the meat left. Then down here, uh, it's basically packaged, put into boxes, and ready to be shipped. Oh, look at the little baby go. Do you reckon they're quite vicious? Yup. Whip your arm off if you get too close. Oh, how groovy. They suddenly got really noisy. They're thinking, why are those people over there watching us? What people? Us. Wake up, Jared. <laughs> oh, they've all gone. I was right, we scared them. We got too close. Bit of on the spot training for Graham. What we're going to do is there's a gill plate right across here. If you pull the fin back, you can see the gill plate along here. Mm -hmm. See how you pull that back? That bounces up a bit. Yeah. Okay, now what we're going to try and do, we're going to cut right along there and try to do it on like a 45 degree angle. Okay. So I, I start with the tip of my knife and I work from here and then I bring it around like this. Snap through the backbone. There you go, yep. And then flip it over. Same four on that side. Well, what is like, I try to I try to start with my knife like back here and then I just move it around like that so that it goes around. The purpose of that is just to try and save as much recovery as possible. Okay. Now you see how you got this V on the neck right here? This is what we're trying to aim for, right? And we want to get as less meat on there. That's a that's a good neck cut though. Okay. And then again start with the tip of your knife and work over. Like that. Okay. You just want to you want to try and cut it a little bit farther down for recovery purposes. Okay. All right. It cuts through quite easily, and then there's a crunch, and you cut through the bone. Once you've done that part, you're just turning it over, slicing through here at a 45 degree angle. Notice the glove on Graham's <laughs> left hand. It's made of chainmail like a knight of the realm. It's to protect his hand from working with such big knives. I dare say Graham thinks he deserves a knighthood for his endeavours. None of the salmon is wasted, not even these heads or tails. Every pound of fish waste is sent to a composting company where they mix it with wood pulp to create high grade topsoil. Even the spines of the fish are scraped to make pate. to go in head first so they don't get stuck in the pipe. So I just have to feed them make sure they go down. And they need a little push <laughs> down the pipe. Um, it's more messy but I prefer it out here rather than in there because that the repetitive action makes your muscles really, really sore. Whereas out here, I mean, it's hard work, but it's a different kind of work. It's faster, but it's, le it's less painful. It's really funny, because in China, when we were fishing, I was screaming everywhere. I've overcome my fear, and I'm all right. And I could, like, batter a fish and kill it now. They don't scare me. So 
I've accomplished something on this trip. Do you think Jared's a different boy now that he's away from the other rest of the group? Well, when it's just me and him, it's great. But sometimes he gets a bit funny when like the whole group's there. Yeah, definitely boys don't mature as fast. I mean, he doesn't know when to stop. Like these fish, they don't know when to die. I remember Nicole dreading working with fish, but that all seems to be forgotten now. We're trimming the fat off the fish, because they have, when they're packaged, they have to be really nice fillets. They have to look good, and they don't look good when they start up there. Um, the training for this is usually about a month, but I've been doing it for about 45 minutes so far. And it, I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing okay. Um, I've only ruined about two fish. Okay. This is the sterling fish, which is a top quality fish, which goes to restaurants and everything. But if I make a mistake on this fish, it's not sterling anymore, it gets downgraded. So you have to actually do it really well. I, I mean, I'm really enjoying it here now. The first day, I hated it. I would have done anything to leave. But now it's okay. It's amazing what fun you can have with fish. <laughs> I didn't expect can the fish factory to be my favourite. I expected it definitely to be my worst. I was dreading coming here. Um, and if you'd asked me on the first day, I would have said it was my worst place to get me out of here now. Um, but no, I'm enjoying it. Um, I have heard that um, Tom quite likes changing jobs. He gets bored of them very easily. Um, which isn't quite the idea. Like, we get put somewhere. We're meant to be there for, like, a certain amount of time. Um, but, yeah, I think Becca got a bit annoyed with him at times because he made it seem like he was doing all the work and she resented that a little bit. Oh well, he's been found out at least, Nicole. Poor old Tom, you've got to feel sorry for him. Not all the boys here are skivers though. Jared is really getting into the swing of things here. With a policy at the factory of rotating jobs around the workforce, no one can hide away in the ice room or anywhere else. But what it does do is remove the monotony of a single job day in and day out and helps give a fuller understanding of everyone's jobs. What a good idea. But Jared's been busy here and he's nearly finished for the day. You scoop the net in and it goes in the net in and pulls all the fish out. But he's chosen about the worst moment left because this is all the fish we've got left in the thing. We've only got about 12 fish left. So when it comes out, it's got hardly any fish in at all. It's really hard to push it down at the minute because the net's there. Quite hard on the shoulders. Okay, uh... Jared, remember, you gotta come over. Yeah. Push that one. So when this haul is done, Jared, are you able to go back home, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> You've got to do about 7,500 fish in a day, and at lunch we've done 5,000. 5,500, George? We got up at about 4, four o'clock, we got picked up at 4 30 and brought it down here. We're the first people here, so tomorrow hopefully we'll get a bit more of a line, maybe an extra 10 minutes. But I think we've got one fish left. One fish in here, hold on. Yeah, one fish left. Excuse me, gentlemen. How would you like having an English partner then, George? Oh, good. He's Where did this rope run to, George? Pulled it all just, off. Just unwrap it. 
Off the back? Just unwrap it. Ah. Fall right down. Actually, all the kids have been pretty good. Oh. Yeah. Have you been surprised at how hard they've been working? Yeah, for 16 year olds. You know? For the amount of work they've had to learn in less than a week, it's been uh, pretty good. Got lots of enthusiasm and a good sense of humor. Good sense of humor? Is he talking about the same, Jared? Yeah, I'm worried about this kid. He could take my job. <laughs> Tom better get back to it soon or there'll be an avalanche. Hey. It's snowing again. I've got to get on with it. I'm on my own in here for the next three, four hours. So. I made the mistake of looking up earlier and got loads of <laughs> in my eyes. I think he must have frozen his brain. You're meant to be shoveling it, not eating it, Tom. Pretty good. <laughs> All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, or so they say. It might not be a nightclub, but the local ice rink is certainly where most of the young people hang out. We're professional ice skaters. <laughs> How do you balance on these things? Hey, Carl. Oh, sorry. Right. Oh, okay. I'm going to show up. Why? Where are the boys? Right. Come with me. Oh, no, they can't let you have to stop. Go on. What's this? On the sidelines again? That's right, lads. Just let the girls show you how it's done again. Looks like the boys have a few fans already. Maybe Graham, Jared, and Tom could help them with their homework. They must be all like 12 years old. Oh my god, oh my god, I'm on TV, oh my god. Oh, they're being shouted at. <laughs> well, any chance of a Torval and Dean pairing from the Trex team seem to have melted away.